It's actually pretty fun to toy around in creative. It fosters experimentation, yielding interesting knowledge you might otherwise not have found. For example, I didn't know that the blast door was actually compatible with uh, the standard Elo console. But it is. The blast door doesn't have a button, but is interesting enough as an item because it has supposedly unlimited pressure. Uh, differential. And the airlock, yes, there's a door called airlock, has a max pressure differential of 1 megapascal. I wonder if they'll upgrade this now that they have made these reinforced walls. I made a video about that. Which now have a pressure differential maximum of 8 megapascals, all four of them, and now there's even the reinforced wall with 10 megapascals. I also didn't know you could actually assign multiple gas sensors to this thing. I mean, it makes sense. If you make an airlock that is a bigger chamber, you need multiple sensors, else uh, the evacuation information might not be accurate. There might still be some gas over here. Honestly, I haven't tested if this is actually functioning like this, but I assume that selecting the gas sensors will do that trick. Both these doors are actually pretty neat. Look at the lights. Too bad this guy needs steel to be made. But alright, so it's not for the first time when you play, but once you have some steel and want to expand your station. Using creative is pretty uh, straightforward. You just say new world, moon, whatever, and then creative. If you want to uphold a certain light situation, press escape right after loading your game and uh, do orbit time scale zero, which freezes the world time. If you just type difficulty in the console, which you open with F3, you can see the current difficulty, but you can change it. For example. Or you can switch to creative at any time. Mind the capital first character always. Easy, normal, hard, creative. If you check the keyboard controls and the settings, you will find far down the creative tools. There's one button that activates the panel, that's the list in which you can pick things that you want to spawn, and then a hotkey with which you can spawn things. Whatever these keys are for you, these are mine. So let's press that hotkey. In the left top you can see the list, now I can start typing. Active vent, for example. Now if I press the spawn key, I get a stack always of the respective stuff. Here, five active vents. But there's also the creative tool, very important. Tool, just look for it, item authoring tool. What does it do when you spawn it? Well, for example, I can hold a hotkey, R uh, in my case, probably C in your case, to delete something. Then I click and it's gone. I can also just click on something that is already constructed and deconstruct it. This will not remove it, it will just deconstruct it down to its lowest level. And I keep clicking, it will uh, reconstruct it again. Let's make an iron frame. Right mouse button. See, I'm building not with iron frames in my hand, but with the uh, authoring tool. And this is then an instant spawn. It instantly builds that. Then I click. And then a longer progress bar comes. So there's an endless cycle that you can easily abort because the deconstruction progress bar is so slow. So now we have two ways to lay cables. This one. Or this one. If you just keep clicking here, nothing particularly interesting happens. Okay, nothing. We can also easily deconstruct things again by holding the hotkey and this would also deconstruct this wall. I'm not going to do this now because then I would have to remake it and I spray painted this already. Now let's look at a few things that you can spawn. If you want to make uh, an IC housing you have to look for logic. Item kit logic circuit. Uh, let's go indoors and hmm, wait. Here we can see that better. So place the IC housing 
So again, I was looking for logic, even though you'd expect the other logic things to come up. They do, but this is how you find the housing. It's not under housing or anything. And if you're looking for IC10, you will be out of luck. You have to look for integrated circuit. And then I can either oh, I can actually not spawn it with this guy. This is only for making structures. This is just an item. So I will press the spawn key instead. The computer is straightforward. <laughs> oh yeah, that's 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 straightforward, isn't it? Uh, kid computer. Now, if you want to program that chip, you need that motherboard, which is under programmable. Spawn. Stick it in. Yep. Oh, by the way, something very interesting. In uh, Creative, you have access to RTG, radioisotopic generator, which outputs 4,000 watts. There's also another RTG, uh, RTG survival. I don't know what the difference is. Let's check that out. Heavy. Analyzer. And what is, it, what is it showing? 600 watts? 4000 watts. So the, the one that says survival, as if that were usable in survival mode, which I believe it currently is not, um, ha produces less. And the one that is just for creative fucking around, that one produces more. That's an easy uh, way to remember that, because it's probably the way around it would be. So um, these are the creative tools, but there's something that doesn't re require the creative mode, but is very useful in it regardless. Uh, the Edgars command. We can um, just say add gas to this reference ID, which I can also find out by just looking here at the tablet. Oh, interesting. It's a different number. Oh, huh. unexpected. All oh, right. This refers to the actual thing. Anyway, uh, the tank doesn't have such an ID, but still with the creative tool, you can find it out. 3568. So add gas. Oxygen, 3, 5, 6, 8, 100,000 or 10,000. Um, and you can even name the temperature in Kelvin. This would be super cold. And if you don't name it, it will be 20 degrees Celsius. Add gas. Adding this amount of moles. Let's see what's in there now. Yeah, 48 kilopascals. Not much. Let's add a few zeros then. Ah. 4 megapascals. Let's add a few zeros then. Okay, that's 400, 500 megapascals. Not a good thing. Let's remove that. Uh, anyway, uh, something I wanted to find out. What happens if you have a pipe with some gas in it that radiates the gas, uh, the thermal energy away here out here in the uh, vacuum? And what if you do that inside a room? I'll go with the um, pipe network number 3542. 3542, 100 liter capacity. Let's just add 100 more, see what happens. 2 megapascals, that was a healthy choice. So it's radiating away some millijoules. Slap some radiators on it, why not? So again, I can now spawn this uh, by pressing F9 or something, then I get a stack. Or I can just use uh, the creative tool to slap them on there directly. The authoring tool. And now temperature is falling. Okay, that was expected. Let's do the same indoors. Ooh. Okay, nothing in here yet. Uh, three, six, four, five, three, six. And is radiating away millijoules, even though we are in a room. Interesting. Well, let's put some radiators on this. And it's also descending in temperature. So it looks like 
I mean, maybe I'm talking out of my ass here. I would have to test this, and I will. But it looks like we could like go to Venus, create a vacuum box, and then create a pipe in, in there that would radiate heat away into the vacuum, um, even though that vacuum isn't really there. I mean, out there we have the hot atmosphere forth. You know what I mean. You could be able to simulate the lunar situation of absolute zero and utilize it for cooling. Doesn't it cool further? Yes, it does. Just slowly so. One megapascal in there, so that should start becoming liquid at minus 150. Ish. Man, this looks so good. Interesting that the amount of radiation it gives off is decreasing. Well, less is left, so less can be radiated, I guess, but it seems to be descending quickly. Hmm. Aha, uh -huh, here we go, just as expected. All right, so let's take a look at Vulcan, if you can use this as an exploit. Not that I recommend it, but, you know, Ah, Vulcan. 70 degrees indoors. And I just made a little box here. Closed, 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 and of course closed to the top. Um, so there's a pipe here that an active vent can feed into. This here is insulated, so it can't bleed with the room atmosphere. Pipe goes on. Oh, I forgot a radiator. Okay, better. And it continues, and it continues, and it continues, and then it continues further, and continues further, and ends up once again out here with insulated pipes in an active vent. Uh, the box is not yet evacuated. 101 kilopascals, which of course needs to be evacuated, let's do that. Nothing left. Vacuum. I will keep this thing on, just for good measure. So, let's pump some room atmosphere in there. There is no pollutant here. Why is there pollutant in there? Huh. Anyway, uh, is it cooling down? It's not cooling down. Why not? It's not radiating or convecting anything. Why is this different from the moon? Why is this some kind of check that is saying, well, there's planetary atmosphere and so it doesn't work? Is that the reason? Hmm. Well, anyway, apparently you cannot use this as an exploit. What if the entire station is properly evacuated? What then? Well, same thing. Nothing is being convected or particularly radiated away. Oh well. It's only for worse with vacuum then. And otherwise, of course, it would have been a cheat, an exploit. And I'm glad that it doesn't work. I was just very curious. And once we have atmosphere in here? But no radiating. It's over. And that's it. See ya.